a little late this morning, and I'm sorry about that. I wanted to bring to you another devotion uh, from the Christmas Story Perspective, Day 3, as it is Wednesday. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 8 through 20. It's all about the shepherds this morning. So if you want to get your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 2, again, I'm going to talk about the shepherds. I'm going to talk about this story, and then my hopes is that you would be willing and able to read this once we set the narrative and uh, I give you the challenge from what uh, I learned this morning. All right, we're in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, the story of the shepherds hearing about the baby Jesus. All right, so here we go. Shepherds, they were viewed as outcasts of society. They were the ones that were often by themselves. They were often found in the middle of the field, and they were not very wealthy people. Anyone could be a shepherd, and it was a lonely job. It was a job that you didn't have much interaction, and when you did come into town to sell your sheep, you were viewed down on because you didn't have the greatest clothes, and you certainly didn't have the greatest aroma about you because you've been around sheep and out in the wilderness uh, trying to tend your flock. They also, the shepherds, they would be out in the middle of nowhere, especially the, the shepherds in tonight's or this morning's uh, devotional. They're out in the middle of nowhere. They're minding their own business. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're counting their sheep and they're looking for enemies of their flocks when the angel, <coughs> excuse me, they approach. <clears throat> so it's interesting, sorry, <clears throat> that the shepherds, their first reaction was to have fear. And they, these shepherds, these are professional shepherds, and they would have seen the worst of the worst. They would have seen the bears. They would have seen uh, the lions and the tigers and all of that. They would have seen the foxes. They would have seen if there's coyotes in Israel. They would have seen all of these predators that would have come into their sheep pen or around their sheep to try to take off one of the sheep. And these shepherds would have been able to defend themselves. They would have had a staff or they would have had a slingshot to protect their sheep. But here come this, this angel. And the first thing the angel says is, do not be afraid. I often think that's a really good message for us today. And a good reminder for us is to not be afraid. Hey, the good Lord's with us. And he is here. So let's have faith over fear. So the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy. This is going to be good news. I'm going to give you news that is going to cause you to have a lot of joy. Notice the angel who he goes to. He goes to the shepherds. And the shepherds are seen as those that are lowly in society. And that's because the Savior is not just for those who are of the upper class or those that have the money or those that are well-to-do or for those that are of royal descent. Jesus came for all those, whether you're highest in the society or you're in the lowest of society. Jesus came for each person. And it's not about what you can do. It's not about what you can buy. It's not about the amount of money that you have or the clout that you have in society. It's about coming to that place to understanding why Jesus came. The angel tells the shepherds the good news, but he also gives them an opportunity to verify the testimony. And this is one thing that jumped out to me when I was reading this this morning, is that the angel is very specific in what he tells the shepherds to look for. You're going to go to Bethlehem. You're going to see the baby wrapped in swathing clothes, lying in a manger. This is what you look for. And he didn't just say, trust me on this. He went and said, go and verify now, we are to give the good news, but as we share, we are to help people come to the place where they can find the Savior. Hey, don't just take my word for it. Look through history, look through scripture, look through secular history to see what you can find and how much of secular history is backed by the Bible and how much of the Bible confirms secular history. So when we say come to faith in Jesus, this isn't a blind leap of faith. It's actually able to be verified just as the shepherds were able to verify the baby that was born in Bethlehem. So these shepherds, they went on a journey. They went to find Christ. And you sometimes have to take that step of faith or you have to take that journey in faith to be able to find the Savior. But let me tell you, as someone who did take that journey, it is well worth the journey. It is well worth the effort to be able to look and to see. 
I just want to step back and I don't want to ever assume in the scripture, but here come these shepherds. They have this encounter by the angel and then a whole host of angels going to be joining them. But if these shepherds leave their sheep, who's going to watch the sheep? Did all the shepherds go? I don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us there were five shepherds that were there. All five went. There were 10, <coughs> excuse me, there were 10 shepherds that went. Scripture doesn't say. But what we do know is that the shepherds left. And they left all that they had, their income, their job, their career, to be able to go worship the Messiah. But let me tell you that when they went and they found the, the baby, it was well worth the journey. What they left behind, they got tenfold when they went to Bethlehem and they found Christ. And after the shepherds, they see the baby. The shepherds, in turn, they go out and they tell everyone what has happened to them. They tell everyone about the baby that was born and is lying in a manger. The shepherds are the first ones to hear about the birth of Christ. The shepherds are the first ones to go and tell their testimony. They were the first ones to speak of what happened to them. So there's a twofold question here this morning. The first one is, have you taken that step of faith and found the Christ? Have you went and sought out the Savior of the world? The second question I have for you is, if you have, then who can you tell about the baby born in the manger? Who can you go and tell about what Christ has done in your life. You don't need to know all the theological arguments. You don't need to have the right letters behind your name. You don't have to know every, every Bible verse. Those are important. But also what is even more important is you find someone and say, can I tell you about someone that has changed my life? What a great reminder for us this morning as we look at Luke chapter 2, Christmas through the eyes of the shepherd. Thanks for joining me, and I hope that you have a great Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow for our final day of our Christmas story perspective. Have a great Wednesday.